Through these five-minute episodes, most of them even shorter than that, you can build your confidence and competence with advice on breathing and reading, inflection, projection, the roles played by better scripting and sitting, mic technique and voice care tips, with exercises and anecdotes from my career in TV and radio studios. Hello, I'm Peter Stewart. Welcome to today's episode of Get A Better Broadcast podcast and video voice. So we're talking about the journey of the voice from from lungs to larynx to lips. In a few days' time, we'll move into the mouth and the articulators. Later on, we're going to be looking at projection and pauses and mic technique, uh, about ad-libbing, about nerves and confidence techniques, and also vocal care as well. Today your resonators. Now, the resonators, as we've talked about over the past couple of three days, the nasal cavity and the oral cavity. In other words, the nose and the mouth. And we can help those resonator areas to work to their full potential as the sound waves enter them or or try to enter them. First of all, let's see, or, or more appropriately hear, the different effects that the cavities or resonators have on the sound you make. So got a couple of things for you to do, uh, a couple of little exercises for you today. First of all, hum a single continuous note. And you'll feel your vocal folds vibrate at your Adam's apple. And by moving the back of your throat, so the soft palate, you'll be able to change the pitch of the sound. Okay, now the soft palate, if you just pause a moment and run your tongue from the back of your teeth, your upper teeth, and run your tongue back. I tried to do it then as I was talking and realised I couldn't. (laughs) Run your tongue back over the roof of your mouth and there's that kind of arch, first of all, immediately behind your upper teeth. And then almost as far back as you can go. Be careful. Don't really push it back. I don't want you to choke yourself. But you will realise that there's a, a, a kind of soft, spongy bit, and, and and there's a bit of a bit of a hole there. Yeah, and that's where your sound goes up into your nasal cavity, up into your nose area. Yeah. So let's do that that trick again, that exercise again. Hum a single continuous note. And you'll feel your vocal folds vibrate at your Adam's apple. And by moving the back of your throat, that soft palate area that we've just discovered, you'll be able to change the pitch of the sound. And by gently putting a fingertip over each nostril, you'll be able to stop the sound completely. That's because the sound is being diverted through your nasal cavities because you've got your mouth closed. The sound can't come out of your nose that you've diverted it through because you're stopping it the other end. You've put your fingers over your nostrils. Okay, you've probably run out of breath by now, so take another hum and open your mouth. Notice how that pitch changes. Yeah? It's because we were... What we were talking about a few weeks ago about the resonators where the sound comes from, how it's affected. And if you move your tongue to the roof of your mouth, just behind your teeth, so where you might position your tongue to pronounce the letter L, the pitch will change again. And if you move your tongue to pronounce the letter N for November, you'll notice another pitch change. Clever stuff. And what's even cleverer is that we do all this, usually, without even thinking, which is superb. But if we use this as an exercise and do a little bit of conscious thinking about it, we can make what we're doing work better. And then we can use it to better effect by helping our voice and our whole presentation style, because that's the point of this series of podcasts 
to help you get a better voice for presentation for your audio and your video channels, to help you read out loud confidently, convincingly and conversationally. I'm Peter Stewart from London. Back tomorrow with more. Bye. 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 Bye.